How's it going Seattle? Data here and welcome back to the Seattle Kraken Franchise Mode episode number 7 headed into the 2023 postseason. In the last one, the second half of the regular season, it was a wild ride to say the least as around the halfway mark we were barely a few games above 500 but we ended the season 45, 28, and 9 going 8-2-0 in our last 10 and oh by the way we were sellers close to the deadline during the course of the season, uh, the second half of the season that is, we made a few depth moves by trading away a guy like Ryan Donato, 82 overall, by trading away our starting goaltender, Philip Grubauer, 86 overall, Malcolm Subban became our starter, we picked up Philip Gustafson in the trade to, of Grubauer to the senders with a couple of draft picks, Gus the Bus went off with crazy numbers in a backup role, but 4-1-0 and a shutout, crazy numbers nonetheless, Malcolm Subban took over the starting role and really ran with it. 20, 15, and 5, three shutouts, 9-12 save percentage, 2.56 goals against, not bad at all for an 81 overall getting thrust into the starting role. Aside from that, we promoted guys like Kaut and Gauthier. Beniers really came into his own this season as well, and the big dogs are eating up on that top line. Defensively, we saw breakout years from guys like Dennis Chalowski, who had heavy minutes this year as he was able to put up 10 points plus 5 in 62 games played. He was averaging about 14 20 a night when we didn't even know if he was going to make the lineup he was almost at 15 minutes a night same thing for a guy like Hayden Flurry, who had a really good year when we were close to trading him over 15 and a half minutes per night and he was a plus 15 this season so the defense came through the goaltending came through and here we are now at the playoffs the biggest question after last episode was who is our starting goaltender because although Malcolm Subban has been the guy for the most part Philip Gustafson in his smaller sample size does look better. Gen Z McKenzie says Subban definitely should start. He is a higher overall and he had good stats and his sample size was a lot bigger than Gustafson. But yo man Seahawks fan thinks that whoever ended the season as the starter to keep the momentum, keep that same guy going in nets. Although Gustafson did not end as our starter, he did get the last game of the season, but I, think, I still think that Subban was the official starter. Mikey thinks that we're going to wind up winning the cup, so no problem with me there. Go with the hot hand, roll with Gus the bus. Vinny says, hard to determine who will get the start since both goalies have been excellent, but I would probably give it to Subban. Although Gus has the better stats, it's a smaller sample size with Seattle, and that could be detrimental because his stats with Ottawa were around the 900 save percentage in 17 games. So, was it Ottawa? Was it Seattle? Not sure. Either way, even if we do start with Subban, I'm very happy that our backup is someone that we ha that has been showing that we can trust him. And over in the Discord server, Hobbsy leaving a couple of thoughts. First off, making Eugene Melnick spend roughly $12 million on goalies. Only you have the power to do that, so that was fun. And they even ended up missing the playoffs, so that was pretty wild. Gus seems to be as elite as he was in NHL 21. However, I think we've got to start the playoffs with Subban, considering he's mainly the reason we're in the playoffs at all. Did they improve the AI quality of chances in the shootout? That was a fun shootout with the AI actually pulling off moves instead of crashing into the goalie every time. Dreisaitl pulling the Malik was nasty. Love watching that shootout. Eric Stahl jersey retirement? Okay, maybe not, but this was a wild one. He, we tried to trade him to a contender at the deadline. Nobody wants him even for a seventh round pick. He then, and 50% salary retained. He then goes and scores a hat trick a week later. What a moment. Reminds me of the Nick Foligno from the Ottawa series, although not as high stakes. Unless? We'll have to wait and see. Talking about Nick Foligno scoring that Game 7 hat trick to win the Stanley Cup. That's about it. Fire up the boys. Give them their pre-playoff meals, oatmeal and milk, and let's go Kraken. Thank you, Hobbsy. So, those deals last episode, I thought they would have put us, you know, made us go down a little bit. When we did the deal with Carolina, they gave them Yarn Crow and Kale Fleury. They barely made the playoffs, and we picked up... Are the main piece, Ethan Bear isn't even a guy that we're going to be using until next year. We have our 7th defenseman in Jake Gardner and our 13th forward in Jesper Faust now from that deal with the Hurricanes, so thank you to them. And then, like we said, the deal with Ottawa, Grubauer going for Gus and a couple of draft picks. We are stacked for the draft. We have our first, I think we have four seconds. Is it five seconds? We have a lot of second round picks. But regardless, here we are in the playoffs. We ended super strong. Guy like Eric Stahl on that third line, he was kind of going down. We were thinking about trading him, but he ends up having a 34-point season. Negative 12, yeah. 
but 18 goals for the 38 year old so we're going to need a guy like him with his 85 poise veteran presence here in the playoffs i'm very excited to get into the series i know this team doesn't really look like a contender a bit of a ragtag bunch of misfits especially on defense and uh, even more so on goaltending but we're going to try our best because we have shown that we are able to get it done in the first round we are taking on the calgary Flames, a team that almost had an identical record to ours, and they have fantastic depth at all positions, I do have to say. Their forward depth is fantastic, their first line is amazing, Kachuk, Bergeron, and Lindholm. Their center depth is wild, with Sean Monaghan being their third line center as an 85 overall. Backland, uh, him, and Coleman on the third line, Zubi and Manjapane, with Evgeny Malkin on the second line. Fourth line, Lucic, Gautier, and Godin. Defense, Valamaki, Anderson, Hanifin Tanev, 85 overall, Mark Giordano, the man we passed on in our expansion draft because we took someone else because we didn't have the money or the, or the uh, roster spots for him. And uh, Oliver Shillington, goaltending, Jacob Markstrom, 87 overall, backed up by Adam Werner. Uh, scratches Ruzika and Zari. So it's not going to be an easy matchup against the Flames to say the least. They are a very talented squad, but we have grit, we have passion, we have a team motto of why not us kind of thing going on here. The, we have a nice little mix of veterans, we have a little bit of youth with Matty Beneers in there, a little bit of youth on defense with a guy like Jake Bean getting really big minutes as a 24 year old, a guy like Dennis Chalowski as well getting his first taste of playoff action. We have some veterans who have to lead the way and Pulak and Manson on that back end. And of course, Malcolm Subban between the pipes. So very excited to get into the series. If you are new to the channel, you will notice that this video is over an hour long, maybe an hour 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, don't know how long. But what I do is I don't want this uh, playoff series or this playoff episode to be spoiled. So whether we get swept in round number one or we go to the end of round number two, whatever it is, I don't want the length of the video to give it away. So this video may very well be done in 20 minutes and then it's an hour of a black screen with some music going. If that is the case, I would ask that you just let the video run a little bit as it's better for the analytics and everything. But I would much prefer to lose out on a couple dollars instead of having this episode be 29 minutes long and you know that we're not going far in the playoffs. So that being said, Let's get into the calendar simulation here. I want to see what was the last game that we played against Calgary. It was a 6-4 win on the third to last game of the season. So we know that we can beat this team. We can do it. Coming up against Calgary with home ice advantage at the Climate Pledge Arena, April 18th, 2023. Round one, game one, year two. Last year, we lost in seven in the second round. Let's see if we can better that this year with Vladimir Tarasenko, the captain, fully healthy, and a team that has a lot to prove. First period, 1-1 game. Eric Stahl opens it up on the power play. A minute and 36 seconds into the playoffs, Eric Stahl is just proving everyone wrong. This is amazing. Sean Monaghan tied it up a minute later, though, and it's 1-1. Second period now, the Flames take a 3-2 lead. Monaghan scores his second on the power play. Then Lindholm scores, but then Eric Stahl scores again. Two goals on the power play for Eric Stahl. I love it. We're, we're down 3-2. to two. We're being on shot 23-20. But both goals have been on the power play by Eric Stahl. Wake up, boys. Jaden Schwartz, Andre Palat, Vladimir Tarasenko. Wake up. Get it done. We are in this game. Down by one. Five minutes into the third. Nothing coming yet. We're not getting much shots on net, but Calgary are getting theirs. 30 to, 33 to 23 of the shots now. And Valamaki makes it 4 to 2. Subban holding us in there, but we're not giving him any support. We're, we haven't gotten a shot in like well over 10 minutes. Ah, uh, it wasn't meant to be on that one. That was a disappointing game one as we got outshot 40 to 24. 40 to 24. Two goals from Eric Stahl gives him second star honors, but really rough there. I don't know where the scoring was in that one. Only coming from the power play as well. Not even the third line Eric Stahl. It was power play Eric Stahl. So five on five, we got eaten alive out there especially in that shooting uh, totals there. We need Vinny Trocek, our first line center, the $8 million man to come through. Minus ones on that first line, a lot of minus ones. Bottom six played all right. Um, the defense, I'm not going to be afraid to mix up the defense a lot. Ryan Pulak and Dan Strzelowski did not work that last game. Uh, so I'm going to try, tr let's try getting Pulak back on the first pair, play him with Bean. We'll go plus two, plus two. Again, does the line chemistry even matter in the playoffs some people say yes some people say no regardless i'm going to try to mix up the combos like that we don't have a lot of wiggle room in a series like this against the flames 
Don't want to lose both games at home. Game two, round one, down one nothing in the series. Let's make it a best of five. And don't tell me Eric Stahl is the only guy who has passion and a fire in the furnace. Let's go. Big dogs. Oh, my goodness. Big dogs get out here. And first period ends one to nothing. 24 shots in that period, 14 to 10 for Calgary. But the first shot of the night came 19 seconds in and beat Malcolm Subban right in front of the net there. Defense has got to wake up on that. Michael Backlund. Second period now, 2 nothing Calgary. Sean Monaghan. We're being outshot 31 to 17. Ouch. 31 to 17. Wake up, boys. Let's get something generating in the offensive zone. We haven't scored a single even strength goal yet in this series. Power play, we kill that off at least. Halfway through his third period, we're barely doing anything. No signs of life. We're being outshot by double, and there it is. We're being outshot by double, and it's 3 0 Calgary. Oh my goodness. 39 to 24. We've allowed over 70 shots in two games. And we're being outshot, uh, outscored like what? 6 to 0 in even strength? 7 to 2 overall? Wow, we dropped both games on home ice. And just like that, just like that, that's how fast things can change. At the Scotiabank Saddle Dome, we're down 2 0. Yikes. So we definitely want to start changing things up on a bit more of a serious level. So let me see what's going on. I'm going to try to mix and match. Okay, we'll try the lines like this. Veneers and Tarasenko are going to swap it up. And McCann's going to go second line. Third line, Kaut's going down to the fourth. And Jesper Foss is going to come in for his first game as a Kraken. Try and get some scoring going as a sniper, maybe. Hopefully I can do something. And defense is going to look like this. I'm going to try Bean Manson on the top pair. We need more strength defensively. So maybe a defensive defenseman like Manson on the first pair will be helpful. Then we'll go Alexiak, Pulak, and Chalowski, Flurry. They've always been a good pair together. And special teams, I switched up the penalty kill to get Schwartz uh, and McCann swapped. And um, actually, it was McCann and Gautier, but now it'll be Schwartz and McCann for the penalty kill wingers. So maybe that'll change something up. Malcolm Subban's numbers are not bad, and he's been playing pretty well, I have to say. I don't think he's the issue. So I want to keep rolling with him. We cannot afford to go down 3-0 in this series. We're being outscored 7-2. We need... Defense hasn't been horrible, but we really need the scoring to start coming through. Only two power play goals from 38-year-old Eric Stahl so far this series. So on the road in Calgary, let's do it. First period, 2-0. There it is. Andre Palat scores twice in nine minutes. Even strength, 40 seconds in. Then on the power play, halfway through the first, we're up 2-0. First lead of this series. Second period, 4-0. Vladimir Tarasenko, the captain, comes through on that second line. And Denis Chalowski on that third pair. Let's go. 22-14 the shots, and we're up 4-0 headed into the third. This is huge on Calgary's home ice. Power play Calgary. Blake Coleman scores just as the power play expires. We're up by three almost halfway through this period. I would love to just put it away. Three goal lead is great. Now with seven minutes left, even greater. I'd love to put it away with a power play opportunity here. I did swap up Beniers and Schwartz on the power play units as well. But that's all right with me. We outshoot Calgary 34-22, to which is a big victory. And we take it 4-1 the final. Three stars in this one. Palak, two goals and an assist. Chalowski and Tarasenko, a goal and an assist apiece. And we get ourselves into the series as we are now down two games to one. Still don't want to go down three games to one, but just being alive is just any life is good life. Now let's try and get into this series, uh, get this series to a tie to make it a best of three instead of having to win three in a row. Keep the lines as they are. Things seem to work. We're back in Calgary. Dropped both at home. Let's try and take both on the road. First period, 0-0. Zero, zero. Second period now, still 0-0. Zero, zero. Shots are 18-13 in Calgary's favor, but it is a tie game after 40. Third period now, Patrice Bergeron will open the scoring, but Mason Appleton comes right back a minute later. First goal of the series from Bergeron, and the fourth line center responds. Halfway through this third period, and we are still at a tie. Power play Seattle now. Big opportunity. Killed off by the Flames with under five to go now. Do we have a late hero in the last couple minutes for either side? Under a minute left. We're headed to... We're, what a real uh, onslaught from us in the last couple minutes there. Shots are 32-25 in our favor now. Game tied at one. Headed to overtime for the first time this series. In Calgary at the Scotiabank Saddle Dome, game number four. A goal for the Flames will put them up 3-1 in this series. A goal for us will tie this series at two and make it a best of three.
By the way, executive decision, I decided to turn off the little thing of X factors that goes above a player's head. I found that got a bit annoying and in the way of things. So also speaking of executive decisions on the visuals here, uh, some people have said maybe it's better to go to broadcast. I've heard that a lot in the past. Hold on, here's Matty Veneers. Maxi goes offside. I do prefer the overhead just for commentary purposes, even though if you might prefer to watch the broadcast. I'll never get over the Game 7 overtime winner from Nick Foligno to get, he was a hat trick in Game 7 overtime to win the Stanley Cup. I didn't even know that it was him that scored it, so I couldn't react accordingly because I couldn't see his jersey number and his name didn't pop up on the screen. Oh my goodness. Breakaway Patrice Bergeros! Oh, no! Second of the night for Patrice Bergeron, and we drop it a minute and 19 seconds into overtime. Oh, brutal, brutal goal. I don't know how Michael Backlund is the captain. There's Malkin with the Flames jersey. Oh my goodness, Bergeron. Who fell apart there? Who do we have to blame on that one? Bad goal as well. Face off one there by Trocek. Goes back to Manson, and Manson just gets absolutely shamed like a child in Pee Wee C. Oh my goodness, that is that is sad. Josh Manson, I put you on that top pair because I needed you to be better defensively. I needed this team to be better defensively. Malcolm Subban's killing himself out there and he has to get third star of the night on L. And Manson, you let me down. I cannot believe it. Of course, there has to be a line change that I just made that lets me down. That's ironic. Okay, what are we going to do about this, huh, Mr. Manson? Negative two with one assist. Like, in the simulation, he's fine. It was in-game that he was horrible. Uh, I'm going to keep him there, just for the uh, simulation, the, the slow sim. He seems to do well in the slow sim, but the in-game sim he did horribly there. I'm just going to hopefully chalk it up to some AI, uh, EA, AI voodoo. Back at home at the Climate Pledge Arena, Game 5, Round 1, down 3-1 in the series. We need to win three in a row. We've done this before. We had like a 7-8 game winning streak at one point in the season. Maybe it was 9 even. We know how to win games in a row when we have to. We need to batten down the hatches, and we need to wake up. We need the scores to come through. We need to have some fire within ourselves, and we need to push through this team. You're really just having a laugh, eh? You're really just having a laugh. First shot of the night from fourth line left wing, Milan Lucic. First period ends one nothing. Second period, wake up. I don't know what Markstrom ate before this series. We're down to nothing. Being outshot 25 to 20. And it's 2 nothing. Headed into the final 20 minutes. No one wants to score on this team? Where are the goal scorers? Where are the goals from Schwartz and McCann and even Maddie Beneers? Where are these guys? Power play Calgary. At least we kill that off. Where are these players? Hey, Vinny Trocek, the $8 million man, our first line center, wakes us up. There we go. Power play Calgary. We kill it off. 10 minutes to go now. Let's go. Let's get something going. Fire up the boys on the bench. Eight minute mark. I think it is a good time to come and hop in. Let's watch a little bit of action at home with the home jerseys. Down by one. Trocek gives us life. Let's keep on pushing. At home in Seattle at the Climate Pledge Arena. Down by one with 8-10 to go. Let's see some action. Jake Bean up to Andre Palat. Gets squeezed out on the board. Still has it down low though. Behind the net now. Okay. All right. There's Palat regaining possession. Circles it back up top to Jake Bean. He gets crushed. Palat. McCann. But you're blocking your own shot, Tarasenko. Your own team. Dylan Zubi. Up to Ma okay, Manson. Up to McCann. Let's try and get something going. Second line is out. Jared McCann on net, big boy. Glove save for Markstrom. Face off a win from Chris Bergeron, of course. Hold on, fight for it. There you go against Rasmus Anderson. Trocek gets possession. Don't let go. Back to the point. Bean. Vineyards in front. Scores! Jaden Schwartz, his first goal in the playoffs. And this game is tied with 5.46 to go in the first. His first in the playoffs could not have come at a better time. Vinny Trocek digging deep in those corners. No replay. Okay, thanks for nothing. Trocek digging deep in the corners. And he gets it back. He regains possession from Rasmus Anderson. And that's a great pass in front to Schwartz. Schwartz, Trocek. Okay, let's keep it going. Keep the momentum. But loses possession. And Elias Lindholm will start the rally back for Calgary. Matthew Kachuk over the blue line. Two Berger on the one. Timer. Oh, what? What are you doing? Where? Okay, where are the replays? Why are there no replays? 
What was that? What was that? <laughs> That's gonna be how we get eliminated, right? Don't tell me this was Josh Manson. Oh my goodness, Josh Manson, you're dead. I'm I'm going to trade you. I'm go. You're not even gonna play another game in the NHL. Uh, what? Back to back in game overtimes where Josh Manson just embarrasses me. The shot is stopped. I don't know why Subban sliding across so far out of his crease, and then. Manson just decides to, for no reason, put it into his own net, and Subban watches it go in. Oh my goodness, I hate this AI so much. Oh my goodness, I don't believe it. I do not believe it. For what reason? For what reason? And then you just you poke it and you just watch it go in. And now we're down three to two. Thanks for nothing. That goal was for nothing from Jane Schwartz, and we have three twenty to get it back. Okay, I'm locking on to coach now. I'm locking onto the coach. I'm putting third line out with second deep pair. Let's see if Eric Stahl can get some. I need a face-off win here from Eric Stahl. Let's go, big boy. Come on! Oh, I'm going to push Val Mack and gets the puck up to Manjapane. Gets around Pulak like a pylon. The shot is blocked at the very least there. There we go. Pulak, get it out. Come on, Alexiak. Up to Bailey now. Bailey, uh, keep that defense pair out. Bailey gives it away, but pushes him off the puck. Let's go. Jesper Faust. Eric Stahl in front. Bailey Faust! Oh, big save, Markstrom. Over the blue line. He gets hit. Now here's Jane Schwartz. Look at that first deep pair out. Pulak. Up to Matty Beneers in the zone. Let's try and set something up. There's going to be a good time to pull the goalie now if the menu could come up. Goalie has been pulled. Here we go. With Matty Beneers coming in. Take that shot. Gets blocked. Here's Tanev. Over the blue line. Lindholm. Smanjapane. Stop him! Stop him! Bergeron hits it off the post. Hannafin from no angle, great. And that's the series. Great job. No one cares about the empty net. No one cares about stopping the puck from getting over the red line. No one cares about keeping it in the zone when we're trying to push. No one realizes anything. Even when you become the coach and take over strategies, no one realizes anything. All these puck breakout stuff that EA had been praising for years. Trocek, let's go. Put it on net. Stop by Monster. That's That's the series. That is the series. In five games, we will drop this series in five games. Shots 31 to 30. Marks from the difference maker. A big push to the playoffs, but we came up against a very difficult opponent. Although it was a great miracle to make it to the postseason. We fought hard, but nobody showed up. Not Barely anyone showed up for the playoffs here. Josh Manson, and funnily enough, our free, big free agent defensive defenseman signing is who kills us in the end. And we're going to have to make some changes this offseason as the Flames take it in five games over the Seattle Kraken to eliminate us in, our, in the first round for the first time in franchise history, technically, as we lost in Game 7 of Round 2 last year. Malcolm Subban did extremely well. He fought hard. Who's our starting goaltender next season? That's a good question. Eliminated on home ice in such a disgusting fashion. That's really tough. And that's just it, my friends. That is just it. Let's see who the most disappointing pieces in this playoff series were. Very small sample size of only five games. But let's see who really upset us. Ooh, Maddie Veneers, zero goals, negative five. Palat had four points. Stahl, Schwartz, Veneers, all with three points. The plus minuses were uh, just abysmal. Chalowski, two points. Our captain, one goal and two points. The negative three. Trocek, our $8 million first line center, one goal, negative two. The sad thing is you run the simulation again and Trocek and Tarasenko score five goals each and we win in five games, you know? it's That's the, the luck of the draw. Appleton won. Manson with a negative three. Pulak, negative three. McCann, one assist, negative four. I was about to sign him to a six-year extension and he gets one assist, negative four. Bean, one assist, negative three. Gotze didn't do anything for us. Faust, three games, negative one, not horrible. Hayden Fleury, negative two. Alexiak, negative one, the best actually. And Kaut, five games and a plus minus of zero. Did he have the best plus minus on the team? Him, Kaut, yeah, the bottom six guys here, third, fourth liners, they had the best uh, plus minuses. Horrible, really horrible. Goaltending, Subban did his best. Look at that. We got shamed so badly and he still had a 916 save percentage. I feel bad. This guy did everything he could and more. 2.70 goals against average. 
No hard feelings for Malcolm Subban. So now that our season is over, that means we can send some players down to the AHL to help out that team. Anyone who is not waiver eligible. I'm thinking it might just be Maddie Beneers who's not waiver eligible. Yeah, Maddie Beneers is going to be sent down and he'll get to get some extra playing time and help out the team down there in the it might as well just do best nhl lines and he'll help out uh pacific. what's it called the eight uh, uh, pacific palm springs hc what actually the did we get eliminated in the playoffs uh pacific no they won three nothing in the first round okay that's great pacific palm springs hc so i'm gonna fix up the lines to make uh maddie veneers play in the lineup there we'll try to win the calder cup i'm gonna make sure that the scouting is all taken care of and I'll see you once we have a Stanley Cup champion at the award screen. And in the postseason, the NHL's Stanley Cup champions were the Tampa Bay Lightnings. But down in the AHL, Pacific Palm Springs HC took the Calder Cup in just their second season of existence. For sure, Matty Beniers must have been a part of that. They took it in seven games against the Providence Bruins as well. Ryan Suzuki, who we got in the Carolina Hurricanes trade, 18 points in 22 games. He's up to a 75 overall. He had a great season. I'm sure he'll be a part of our team in the future. Mason Shaw, our expansion draft pick from the Minnesota Wild, also up to a 75 overall. He had 17 points. Barry Boulet, Phillips, our pick from Calgary, he had 12 points. Forte, Heiskanen. Uh, where is Matty Beneers? Actually, he won't be here because he now that the season's over, he gets called back up. So I'll check that in a moment. Goaltending, uh, Villejus was probably called up as well, but Decor did well when called upon. Matty Beneers, who is now up to an 86 overall. My goodness, what did he do down the playoffs with uh, with the Pacific? He did eight points, five goals, eight points in 19 games. Nothing crazy. But not too shabby. And Ville Husso went 14, 4, and 3. Three shots, 938 save percentage, 1.70 goals against average. So very nice to see that from the 80 overall. Making our way to the awards now. As we know, the Tampa Bay Lightning won the Stanley Cup. Third time in four seasons for them. President's Trophy to the Hawks back-to-back -back years. It was Vegas in the Stanley Cup Finals up against Tampa Bay. Individual awards. Connor McDavid won the Art Ross and the Hart Trophy. James Norris went to Dougie Hamilton. Lady Bing to Patty Kane. Calder to Cole Perfetti. Conn Smythe to Braden Point. Vezina to Marc-Andre Fleury. Jennings also to Fleury. And he played with Brian Elliott. Masterton to Valimaki. Jack Adams. What?! Back-to-back -back seasons for Giordano, who was like fired for half a day, then got re-promoted re after like maybe two or three days. He wins back-to-back -back Jack Adams Award. I don't think I've ever had that happen to a coach of my team. Basically because we're sellers, quote-unquote sellers, but we made it to the playoffs, so that's why he gets it. Uh, Sidney Crosby winning the Selkie for back-to-back -back years. Ted Lindsay to McDavid, Morris Richard to Patty Kane. AHL the awards for the Pacific Palm Springs HC. Ville Husso won the... Uh, equivalent of the uh, con Smythe, and that is all for the awards there. And if you're curious as to how the Flames in the playoffs, they went on to lose in six games to the Western Conference champion Vegas Golden Knights, who lost in six to Tampa Bay. So the Flames ended up going six and five in the postseason. Seems like it was a much more difficult time against Vegas. Simming to the draft now, the scouts have been working overtime. So many good prospects and a lot of people we want to, we want to scout in this draft, but unfortunately we have a lot of B and C rated scouts. Pittsburgh wins the draft lottery going from four to one. Arizona goes up from three to two. St. Louis drops from one to three. San Jose from two to four. Everyone else stays where they were. Player retirements now. Let's see who calls it a career after the 2023 season. Big Jumbo Joe Thornton retires after losing in the Stanley Cup Finals. Oh, brutal. Big Jumbo Joe, 1,609 points in 1,844 games. Still an 84 overall at the age of 43. But he retires. He scored 54 points with Vegas. And in the playoffs, he had 17 points in 22 games. Wow, he really wanted that cup. That really hurts. Parise retires back with the Devils. Shea Weber retires. Erickson, Kessler, Filpula, Little, Seabrook, a bunch of names down there. And for the goaltenders who retired this season, Corey Schneider. None of our coaches retired. Very nice. Uh, Andy Green and Brian Little are now scouts. Uh, no need for the draft interviews. Pro scout, good night. And here we are at the draft. So let's go look at the draft board for a moment. This is where I'm going to need some suggestions. Who do we think about drafting? We have picks number 24, number 24 in the first round, then 12, 16, 17, and 24 in the second round. So that's 44, 48, 
49. Back-to-back -back picks right there. So 44, 48, 49, and then 56 here. So let's keep note of that. And looking at the draft class here. So first overall pick will be Connor Bedard for sure. Medium franchise. Uh, Scrastens here. Miroslav Scrastens is going to be second overall. We don't know much about him. Didn't get much scouting done in Extra Liga. NHL ready though. Similar to Guy Lafleur. Maxim Bermistrov, third overall sniper. Medium elite uh, Timu Solani. Earl Ray Marcos. So a lot of good medium elites here within the first and uh, within the top seven. Interesting to note that. But our pick is at 24. Here are all the people who are going in the first round. Lots of uncovered prospects. So at least that's good to see. I don't know if there's anyone I really want to trade up for outside of the top 10. Pick number 24 could be this guy, Braden Emery, two-bar medium elite. Or we could try to trade up for Saunders here, uh, Quinton Saunders, six foot four, two-way D. He's medium top four, and he is three years away, though. Uh, unknown from Sprutz, Sprutz here from Extra League. I don't know why, because I sent out a scout on him. I don't know why he's unknown. That's disappointing. Then coming to our selections here. So 44... Could be this guy Cameron Dempsey, medium top four D. We could even trade up for Yuan Su, medium top six, maybe a grinder. Sloan also a medium top four offensive defenseman. Four years away, this guy's three years away. Then we get into the other picks here at 48, 49, 50. Excuse me, 48, 49, 56. So at 48, there's a few guys who are two bars, one bar medium elite. We just don't really know a lot about them. The scouts were not great after beyond the first round. So three years away, three years away, we know that. Um, Randy Wisniewski, some medium elite forwards. At 49, there's medium elite left wing from Germany. And then at 56, another one bar medium elite passing by there. 56, not as interesting. Some top six D-men. Maybe we trade down or just trade away entirely if we're thinking about a move to move up into higher picks of the first round. So a lot of two bar medium elite throughout the, the third, fourth round, stuff like that. But not a lot of people uncovered fully, which is disappointing about the first few years when your scouts are not ready to go yet. We do have a guaranteed medium lead here, Popov, from what is that? From Estonia. Gonna go 92, so we'll definitely try and draft him. But the big question is do we try to trade into that top 10 or something like that? Looking at the stats here for all these players in an A plus league, 23 points in 56 games. Then in a C minus league, 43. Uh, three points and he is NHL ready this defenseman is Isaiah Marco 49 goals 36 assists in the OHL NHL ready similar to Solani then Edgar Legg this guy right winger NHL ready similar to Tarasenko Braden Yeager a real player which is fun one year away similar to Couturier medium elite after that starts to go into the medium top sixes so if you want to know more about any prospect in particular let me know and I'll look into it I'll send you a picture on Discord or reply to your comment here on YouTube. Looking at the progress reports as well, then we'll check the contracts and call it an episode. Try to stretch it out a little bit since it was an early exit. Looking at the growth here, Vladimir Tarasenko is up to a 90 overall, so that's very, very good to see. Vinny Trocek's at an 87. Let's uh, sort by modifications. Matty Benier is up to an 86. That's huge. He could be first line center next season, and then we push Trocek down to second line center. Chalowski's at an 81. He went down actually. Trocek up to an 87. Philip Gustafson from a 79 to an 81. Is he our starter next season? Question mark. Jane Schwartz up to an 86. Cole Lind up to a 79. He could probably crack the bottom six. Bailey dropped to an 83. Do we think about trading him? Malcolm Subban grows to an 82. Appleton, uh, McCann, Pulak, Bean, Alexiak, Flurry, Kaut, Palat, Manson, Gardner, Stahl, Faust. Uh, I'll stay the same up to Stahl. Faust grows to an 80. Gambrel also growing to an 80. He could be our fourth line center next season. Uh, looking at the goalies, Gustafson and Subban. Sorry, looking at all in the system now. Uh, Matechuk, 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 I believe, grew up to a 69 overall. Very nice. Suzuki's at a 75. Actually, I'll grow, assert by overall. Ethan Bear, who we're going to get signed, is an 85 overall. So that means we're likely trading a defenseman. Who's the defenseman that we're trading if Ethan Bear slots into the lineup now? Uh, Lozo at a 79, Fisher up to a 79, Gotzi up to a 79, Tanev down to a 79, Hosang up to a 79, any other growth in particular? Phillips up to a 76, Wilm up to a 76 as well, that's good for the future, we'll get him signed in the AHL, Kyle Wood 75 as always, 
Uh, Mason Shaw, 75. Year check up to a 75. He could play some any, uh, some AHL minutes now. Like we said, Suzuki, 75. Vesa Heiskanen. Whoa, look at these X-Factors that he just got on his name now. So X-Factors could pop up out of nowhere. I said it's rare in my uh, in my chemistry video, and this is one of those moments. He has one, two, three, four, five X-Factors. Excuse me, one, two, three, four, five uh, superstar abilities and one... Uh, zone ability, I guess you call it, the tape to tape there. So pff, don't mind if I do. Vesa Heiskanen, we bought low on him, a prospect on the block from the Capitals, and here he is now, 73 overall with those X factors. Matejchuk out of uh, Ottavainen, whoever these guys are. Goalies we saw. So there are the progress reports. Keep that in mind as we think about who's getting re signed for next season. We do have, like, I think 20 million some dollars in extension. So looking at all the expiring people, Ethan Bear is going to cost us whatever, five, six million. Then after that, you minus that from what we have. So let's say we really have maybe around 17 million to play with. Jared McCann wants six years at 4.475. Maybe we go five years around 3.5 for Jared McCann, even though he was very disappointing in the playoffs. Jake Gardner would probably let him walk. Eric Stahl probably let him walk. I don't think we can afford like two million for him. Uh, Jesper Foss probably let him walk. Gamble, I'd like to get him signed. Same with Kaut, Lind. Fisher probably let him walk. Uh, these other guys probably get most of these guys signed back on. And for the goal... Sorry, for... Uh, yeah, goaltending first. Subban and Gustafsson. Is that our tandem for next season? We could sign Gus to a decent contract here. He's down for three years. He's down for a pretty length, lengthy deal here. So I don't want to cheese it too much. But I'd be down to go maybe like three years, one million per year. I think that maybe, I don't know, something that sounds fair. Uh, and then when it comes to unsigned players, we'll get Wilm signed on. We'll get Yerichek signed on. And we'll probably go from there. We'll get some good prospects in the system with all of our draft picks. And now it just comes down to you, my friends. What do we do with those picks? Do we make trades at the draft with players, with picks? Do we go into free agency with all of that money, with the 18-some million? But, you know, we give McCann three or four, leaves us with 14. Then we want to sign a few other $1 million contracts. Maybe we're closer to seven, eight million left over. Here are the potential free agents coming up this year, but I really doubt that most of these make it to free agency. Just looking at UFAs here. So here are some of the names that could potentially be in free agency when we get there on July 1st. Maybe we change up the coaching. Let me know your thoughts on all of that down here on YouTube or over on the Discord server. Link in the description for that. Leave a like if you are excited for this upcoming draft and do consider subscribing as well as you'll be made aware of all uploads for the channel, including Seattle Kraken franchise mode and other NHL 22 franchise mode videos. Be sure to check out the chemistry guide if you haven't already. The scouting guide is coming out soon with the line chemistry one will be very helpful for you in your own franchise mode. Do feel free to let the video run for a little bit with the black screen. Enjoy the music, do a little homework, get a few Z's, have some sweet dreams. Everything counts here for the channel now that it does have the YouTube partnership. So once again, I thank you for watching. Disappointing end, only a five game playoffs, but we do have a lot of interesting things coming into this offseason. I do think that a few right moves will get us to that next level, and that is why we need you. So leave all those thoughts on YouTube or Discord. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one.